for reaction, I talked to Republican Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee just a short time ago. Senator Corker, good to see you. Good Thanks for first time on Thank the Ingram you. angle. Thank so, you. Yeah. what about? So late. You know, so I, I know. Well, we, yeah. we we kept you up, but let's talk about today. Big news day. Mm -hmm. Did this really surprise you, Rex Tillerson, out today by the president? Did you ever think he was a great fit? Uh, I thought he was really good at giving sound advice. I've known for some time. I talked to both of them often, and I've, I've known it hasn't been a perfect fit. So uh, was I surprised? Not really. Um, but uh, I will say since December 1st, right around that time, you felt a reprieve. You felt like that they were uh, working better together. So the, the, the story today was, this is chaos. The people are freaking out in the media. Oh, this is just more chaos. And it turns out that the president is apparently considering also firing the VA secretary after the story broke that he was on some sightseeing trip, I guess, in Europe on an official business. Uh, Shulkin might be out, replaced by Rick Perry. Thoughts on that? Um, I think Rick will be good at anything he does. He's been a good governor, obviously. Um, but look, uh, this is, uh, as I was telling you earlier, the reporters in the hallway have almost become to, you know, this is just sort of normal and changes are occurring. And, you know, the president uh, needs someone as secretary of state that he has a lot of faith in. And again, uh, I thought Rex did a very good job. He has a great relationship with Mattis, which is very unusual. And the two of them always go in on the same page. And I don't know Pompeo very well, but I do hear very good things about him, and we look forward. He's going to be in the office later this week. I look forward to a good confirmation. Well, the, the, the thought is the internationalists, the interventionists in the Republican Party are kind of on the downslide, and the more nationalist, populist wing is on the ascendancy because, of course, Pompeo is more in line with Trump. Tillerson's more, I think, more in line with, you know, your thinking. And what are your thoughts on that? Is it better to have that tension where the internationalists are, are kind of vying for the president's ear? Now, I would use the word realist. Okay, fine. And, and, I say, uh, you, you, you use your terminology, yeah, I'll use and, mine. And I think the, you know, the president's speech, uh, which we lauded, I was the first person, I think, to laud one of his foreign policy speeches speeches had the the makings of a Jim Baker kind of realist world so I don't I don't necessarily look at him as a nationalist I mean he is you know in Afghanistan doing what he's doing and committed to not something that's defined by time and and so much so he's a mix he's a he's more of a realist um, I do think it's good to have countering voices and uh, and the president does as well and he yeah, said that he and he I think likes he's it. Fine he, with that. he actually likes hearing the debate I mean he talked about that a great deal in the Gary Cohn uh, when he left so um, look, I, I think that uh, as long as, as long as whoever is working with him, regardless of what their point of view is, is giving him the full collage of opportunities uh, to think about things, then I think that's fine. Yeah, but Tillerson couldn't answer the question, did you call him a moron? I mean, that's just, that's just not going to work well. And remember, Barack Obama fired only a few people. I mean, he, McChrystal, he yeah. fired Mattis. Remember when he fired Mattis, he didn't even tell him. He, Mattis yeah. learned about it, yeah. I guess. Second hand, third hand. So people people switch up positions when the chemistry isn't right. I think the president said chemistry just wasn't there. Well, as the president called this morning on his way out west, uh, about 10 o'clock from Air Force One, and as I mentioned to him, look, every one of these people serve at his pleasure. So it's his decision. And and uh, the new CIA chief would be Gina Haspel, who's right. been with the CIA for 30 years. Should be the first woman to ever head that agency. She is not going without criticism today. This is uh, a former FBI special agent, Ali Soufan, who was on MSNBC earlier today. Let's watch. There is an issue of torture, mm -hmm. but also there is an issue of the destruction of videotapes, evidence on torture. Right. And that happened uh, in violation to a federal judge's order. Mm -hmm. So now this is another thing that need to come out during the confirmation hearing. We need to know what she thinks about these issues. Uh, the left is gearing up to go after Gina Haspel, who is an undercover for most of her career, is being lauded even by some former Obama administration officials, like I think Clapper today. Uh, what of that? I think we're going to see with these changes, maybe three of them, you mentioned one that I was unaware of earlier, um, probably likely uh, to see a pretty partisan environment over the next couple of months. Uh, we have a um, article today out about how the new omnibus spending bill might not defund sanctuary cities. And I saw that today and I thought, yeah. wait a second, now we got the House and the Senate in Republican hands. We got a Republican president. Republicans in election time are really big on defunding things. We're going to do this. We're going to take the money from Planned Parenthood. We're going to defund sanctuary cities. 
And now it looks like they might not do that, meaning you guys might not do that. And I'm thinking, what planet am I living on? What is your view on the sanctuary city issue? Uh, President's out in California today. I think we should follow through on defunding them. Now, this is a decision made by McConnell, Ryan, Schumer, and Pelosi. Okay, they're the ones that are the final deciders. I have no idea what's in the Omni. What I do know... That's a problem, is too. It's, it's, no one knows what's in it, apparently. No, I mean, I think the House may vote on it this Friday. We're supposed to take it up next week. But uh, regardless of the defunding, which I hope occurs, it's a god-awful amount of money. We're spending two trillion dollars more over the next decade if we go through with this process, which we are. So uh, I think the American people ought to be alarmed by the massive amount of spending that's in this bill, and we ought to defund uh, sanctuary cities. Uh, you were close to not voting for that tax bill because uh, it really wasn't what thing. a lot of us wanted in a tax bill. But nevertheless, it does yeah. seem like it's juiced the economy. It has a lot of spending. Any regrets there? Uh, look, I mean, I've been a deficit hawk my entire time. I just alluded to that now. Uh, but I've also been a pro-growth tax person. And so you end up in this place, you know, nothing is perfect here. Um, it was about a half a trillion dollars off mm -hmm. on a $43 trillion base, something I didn't want to see happen. But at the end of the day, um, I'm, glad, I'm glad the economy is growing, and I'm glad that businesses are hiring people and wages are going up. So. Mueller investigation, yeah. where do you think this is going to end up? And people say Trump's not as tough on Russia as he should be. And I think, I looked at Obama. Obama, Russia rolled into Crimea. Right. They were doing the reset. That didn't work. Right. Uh, it didn't seem like Russia was deterred at all in the Obama administration, but... You know, a lot of, uh, you we know. We tried to get lethal defensive weapons into Ukraine. We couldn't do it. We passed a bill to make that happen. And now the, the Trump administration is sending those lethal weapon uh, items in. So, so look, I, I, uh, um, I don't know anything about what's happening with the Mueller investigation. But, uh, and I heard President Trump speak up today about the killing of the spy yep. in the U.K. So I think the rhetoric from him is getting stronger. Certainly Congress on both sides of the aisle has been pushing back. And, and look, Russia is a problem, and they're going to be a problem likely in our elections. Who's a elections. bigger problem, China or Russia? Size, uh, size of the economy, size of the military. Yeah, you know, bigger? you know, Russia's got the economy the size of Italy, so you know, there's not much there. But no. they do have nuclear armaments. Uh, immediately, uh, the issue is more. It's more acute with Russia because they try to stop all that we're doing. They try to interfere. They even are interfering with North Korea. Longer term, no question. China, China is, yeah. is oh. going to bypass us in all likelihood economically, and they they is that, is that a is that a foregone conclusion? China is going to bypass I, us I, economically. I think, I'm not buying into that. I don't want them to bypass well, us I mean, economically. If you just look at the numbers and you look at the the, the likelihood yeah. is that that is what is going to you know you look at us having 320 million people, you look at them having. Uh, you know, a B and two or three, just the economics and the numbers. Uh, Do you think likely. Trump is doing the right thing on the tariffs then and standing up to China saying you're dumping uh, all this material in our country? Uh, well, I wish he'd focus more on China, I'll just be honest. I mean, it looks like we're trying to punish our allies when the focus should be multilaterally. I know you don't like that word, but against China. Uh, so I, I don't I don't like the way we're going about it, and now it looks like we're maybe trading off NATO dues or something like that. So but we get I, I leverage. How do we get leverage against the EU, though, when we have a 150 billion dollar trade deficit with them? We have a 68 yeah. billion dollar trade deficit with Japan, South Korea trade deficit going up. We now have some leverage with them, do we not? Isn't that yeah. the way to get, so get results I, I, for the American so people? So if you're focused on trade deficit, uh, you wouldn't focus on steel with them. You'd focus on steel with China, which is producing 49 percent of the world's uh, steel. So I, I don't like the way that we've gone about it. I don't. I've said that. Um, and I think we should be far more focused on China, as you mentioned. Um, and uh, in, over time, they are the entity that's stealing our intellectual property. They, they've got a program. I mean, we've got a now a, a president for life there. Yeah, it's a new and, uh, How yeah, is that so, going to work out for freedom? Um, it's uh, Look, so they, they are going to be the longer term challenge for us and one that is much bigger. And as you know, uh, being who you are, history says that when one power potentially surpasses the other economically, that creates conflict. And so it's going to be the most difficult issue for us to manage. Now, why do you think the president's approval rating is higher than Congress's today? Uh, look, I, I don't smile so favorably on Congress either. I, I like the people that I work with. Many of them are very, very smart. Most of them are very hardworking. Um, 
but uh, I, I, it's just the way it's always been. It's kind of like lawyers. And, and you have a good relationship, though, outgoing with the president. I know you speak to oh, him yeah. regularly. I mean, you got, you've had a lot of tough words for yeah, him, and he, yeah, he's had really tough versa. words for you. Yeah, vice versa, but, you know, he called, look, we're two hard-nosed business guys. Yep. and. You know, he called Friday night. He picks up the phone to talk about whatever he wants to talk about. Call me today, and and uh, yeah, we've got a very warm relationship as we do throughout the administration. So it's never stopped. There might have been some public words, but we kept. Yeah, working. that's okay. Keep it in the family. Hey, it's really good to have you on. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank we you. We enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.